wheelchair basketball players demonstrate varying trunk and arm movement when pushing the chair, dribbling, passing, shooting, and rebounding due to their differences in muscle function. Observed trunk movement and stability during actual basketball activity instead of a medical diagnosis or muscle function on an examining table form the basis for a player's assignment to a particular classification. Classifiers watch the player's functions during practice or competition and assign the player a classification based on their observations. Classification systems ensure that players with limited or absent lower limb or trunk movement will have a chance to play and that the strategies and skills of a team, not the amount of physical movement of its players, would determine success in competition. The IWBF Functional Player Classification System was first introduced in 1984 with only four classes. Since then, modifications have been made. When a player does not fit clearly into the descriptions of either one class or the next, they are assigned a half point creating classifications of 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5. Also, class 4.5 was added to make a distinctive class for players with minimal disabilities. Players are assigned a point value based on their classification. These points are added during play to ensure that a team does not exceed a predetermined maximum number of points on the floor at any one time. In IWBF international competitions, the maximum number of allowable points is 14. This video is designed to introduce new classifiers as well as players and coaches to the IWBF player classification system and to help in identifying key functional abilities for players in classes 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 and 4.5. There are four simple tests that can be done right away to speed up the classification of players. These tests will separate class 1 and 2 players from the rest quickly and clearly. Class 1 and 2 players cannot pick up the ball with two hands from the floor and return to an upright sitting position. Players in the class 1 and 2 categories also cannot pick up the ball with both hands when the ball is at the side of their chair. They cannot hold the ball with two hands when both arms are fully extended. And they show very little mobility when turning from side to side with their arms crossed over their chest. Players in the 2.5 category to the 4.5 class perform well in these four tests, as you can see while a class 4 player goes through them. Here Marnie Abbott of Canada represents the classic example of a class 1 player. It is most important for classifiers to watch the player start and stop at their wheelchair. In an upright position, when she starts out slowly, Marnie leans into the back of the chair and her head moves slightly forward and backward with each push. When Marnie pushes more quickly, she rests her upper body on her raised knees for support. Notice that when she stops, she must push her upper body back up with her hands. Whenever she stops, her shoulders become thrown back and then her upper body wobbles slightly forward. Class 1 players usually dribble at the side of the wheelchair and this is characterized by instability of the upper body and slow acceleration. Some players may dribble in front of the foot rests, resting the upper body on elevated knees for stability. Dribbling is very difficult to execute for a class 1 player, especially when moving the ball across the chair to change hands because of the lack of stability in their upper body. When Marnie dribbles, she uses her non-dribbling hand for support and balance. When asked to dribble by pushing with only one hand and to alternate the hand bouncing the ball as she goes, you can see that Marnie has a particularly difficult time because at the moment she changes hands and can't use either for support, she has problems balancing. Even while stationary, when Marnie tries to change ball hands 
as she bounces the ball, you can again see how she must hang on for balance as she makes the switch. The two-handed chess pass can only be made with the upper body pressing into the back of the chair, as Marnie does here, or by resting on elevated knees. Notice that after Marnie releases the ball, she falls forward and catches herself to remain upright. When making a one-handed pass, the class one player remains in contact with the back of the chair for support and holds the chair with the non-throwing hand for balance as the pass is made. This is evident as Marnie makes passes with either hand. The class one player almost always tries to catch with one hand because they need the other hand to hang on to the chair for balance. This player is also unable to rotate to receive an over the shoulder pass without using one hand on the wheelchair or their leg to turn their upper body. When making a two-handed shot, you can see that Marnie keeps her upper body in contact with the back support of her chair. In fact, as Marnie shoots, her back is bent right over the support of the chair. When the class one player shoots with one hand, there is significant loss of stability in the upper body as the shooting arm extends over the head during follow through, requiring arm support after the shot. As with catching passes, the class one player usually reaches with one hand for a rebound while holding the chair to stabilize the upper body with the opposite hand, as we see Marnie do here. When Marnie uses two hands over her head to get a rebound, her back is in contact with the back support, and you can see that this is a very unstable position for her. Class 1 players are in a very unstable position whenever they have both hands off the wheels, whether they are catching a pass, shooting, or rebounding. As a result, a Class 1 player can easily be knocked off balance by minimal chair contact. The class 2 player has greater trunk stability when starting, pushing, and stopping than does a class 1 player. You'll notice that the player's back is not always against the support of the chair, as Shira Golden of Canada demonstrates here. Shira leans forward when she starts out. Her back is off the support of the chair, she has good acceleration, and stops more solidly than a class 1 player. Her back remains far more upright not pressed way back into the support of the chair. There is some loss of stability noted primarily at the waist. With each pushing motion there is forward movement of the upper body without the movement of the lower trunk. A class 2 player usually dribbles the ball beside the front casters, especially when dribbling involves an initial loss of stability. Some class two players may dribble directly ahead of the front casters, as Shira does, especially when the upper body is supported by a high placement of the knees. As you can see, Shira's upper body remains more upright compared to a class one player, and her back is not always against the chair's back support. The class two player has much better balance when changing hands across the chair and remains quite upright. Watch as Shira's trunk moves reasonably well as she dribbles from side to side. Remember that Marnie, the class one player, had to keep checking her balance with her free hand when dribbling in this manner. The class two player has fair stability when throwing and catching in an upright position. Notice that Shira's back is hardly pressed into the back of the chair while executing either skill. When making a two-handed pass, Shira does not need to use her hands to check her balance, and although she does need to stabilize herself with her free hand as she makes a one-handed pass, she does not have nearly the difficulty of the class one player. Shira does have some balance problems when she catches a ball with two hands if it is thrown off to the side. 
the Class 2 player is able to rotate their trunk to make an over-the-shoulder catch with two hands, using some support from the back of the wheelchair. A Class 2 player has the muscle power to resist the backward movement of the trunk when they lift the ball upwards. You can see that Shira does not lean back into the chair when she shoots, as Marnie had to do. However, there is a mild to moderate loss of stability in the lower trunk during arm extension and follow through. This results in movement of the lower trunk away from the back of the wheelchair. The Class 2 player can rotate the trunk toward the basket when shooting with both hands. <laughs> 